All right, so now in this question, we're going to look at Bernoulli trials and look at the kind of questions they're going to ask us in the Leaving Cert uh, about Bernoulli trials. So it could be quite a long video. I'm going to go through eight different uh, kind of parts, eight different questions they could ask us. Um, but the reason I'm going through it all of it in one big video is just to show you every single type of question they can ask about Bernoulli trials. Uh, so you'll be ready no matter what they ask in the actual exam. So anyway, I'll just read the kind of start of it now. So an Irish family, they eat dinner together 10 days in a row. There is a 70% chance that they will have potatoes with their dinner each day. All of Bernoulli's requirements are met. So the last sentence there just means that uh, each trial is independent. There's a, um, a finite number of trials and uh, there's only two outcomes, success or failure. So I'm not going to go through each one individually. Um, like I will when I'm answering the questions and I'm not going to read them all out now, there'll be no point. But we'll just start at the first one, okay? So the first one is the probability that they have potatoes eight times. So first I'll just quickly write out the formula. So there we go, it's n choose r times p to the power of r times q to the power of n minus r. So I'll write each one of these out. So n is equal to 10, they have dinner 10 times. Um, or we're going to say the number of times they have potatoes, that's going to be a success. And this question is equal to 8. Um, P is going to be equal to 0 0.7, that's the probability of potatoes. And Q is going to be equal to 0 0.3. Okay, so now it's just about sticking all of these into a calculator and multiplying them all. Uh, and just one, the one thing I said I'd say in the next video, so N R, N choose R. Um, so there's a special, special button on the calculator, calculator uh, for this. So on the sharps, it's above the number five. So you have to press second function and then five. And it looks like N, C, R. And it's actually in orange writing as well. Um, so like on your calculator, you should write 10, C, 8. And then stick that in brackets. And then you, you should have everything else in brackets afterwards. Um, on the Casios. And then on the sharp calculators, it's above the division button and it should look the same. So it should be N, C, R, okay? Um, so what you do is you're gonna put all of those numbers in together. So if I were to write it out, it would look like, uh, not N, sorry. It would be 10, choose eight. Then it would be P, which is 0 0.7 to the power of eight. And then it would be 0 0.3 to the power of two, because 10 minus eight is gonna be two. Um, stick all that into your calculator and they want it to three decimal places and that'll give us the answer of 0 0.233 0 0.233 so that's the probability that they have potatoes eight times uh, out of their ten dinners okay so now we'll move on to question two try to keep that in the top in view there so part two is that they have potatoes half of the time so it's the same formula and in this case, n is still equal to 10, and or this time is only equal to five. So only five successes. Um, and then the p and q, as I have here, are gonna stay the same. So they're gonna be the same for the whole question because the probability of getting potatoes um, doesn't change. So in this case, it's going to be 10, choose five, and it's gonna be 0 0.7 to the power of five, and 0 0.3 to the power of five. And this is equal to, 0 0.103, 103, okay? Um, so like just what the formula is doing is it's calculating just the probability of you getting even potatoes uh, five out of the 10 times in all the different orders. So you could be potato the first night, no potatoes second, potato the third, no potatoes the fourth, and so on. Um, or it could be any other sort of combination. So that's um, why it's so useful. So we showed that in the last video. The next part then uh, they're asking is the probability they have potatoes every dinner. So again, I think I can squeeze this in the bottom. Um, so in this case, N is equal to 10 still. In this case, or is also equal to 10. So it's, just, it's a success every single time. They have potatoes every single dinner. So it's 10, choose 10, 0 0.7 to the power of 10. And in this case, it's 0 0.3 to the power of zero. So in this case, the probability is going to be 0 0.028, 0 0.028. So not that high of a probability that they um, will have potatoes every single day. So one thing you'll see with the with Bernoulli's trials is you do get quite awkward answers. There's going to be lots of decimal places, 
and don't worry that's just the way it is and normally they'll ask you um to give the an answer in three significant figures or three decimal places or so on and um, so don't worry if you get a messy answer you will get a messy answer so i'm gonna have to scroll down now there's not gonna be enough space to squeeze it in every time and um, we'll go to part four and in part four they said i'll just scroll back up the probability that they don't have potatoes on any of the days so it's just that one there and um, the squiggle is probably a bit unnecessary but anyway so in this case n is equal to 10 so it's still 10 dinners and or is equal to zero so there's no successes or they have no potatoes so 10 choose zero and it's going to be 0 0.7 to the power of zero and 0 0.3 to the power of 10 and in this case the answer is going to be quite a small number so 0 0.0000590 000 so hopefully I've got the number of zeros right there and um, but that is three significant figures anyway um, significant figures are a little bit different to to decimal places but it's going to be quite a low number because uh, it's I guess not that probable they have no potatoes on any day so hopefully all of those ones there make sense it's just the easiest way to do it is once you have the formula in front of you, you need to find out what N is, what OR is, the number of successes, what P and Q are, and then it's just about um, sticking each one into your calculator and figuring out the number. So those f first four ones were just sort of getting used to Bernoulli's formula. After this, there's gonna, they're going to get a little bit more difficult. So I'm actually going to leave the video here for now. So just after doing one, two, three, and four, and then I'm going to split the video up into two separate sections. So in the next video, uh, I'll go through part five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, they just take a little bit more time. I don't want the video to go on for too long. So those first four ones are just um, basic ideas of how to use Bernoulli's equation. Uh, and the next video, we're gonna look at the more difficult examples. So hope you enjoyed this and make sure you watch the next one to see the more difficult examples.